Now, as I mentioned earlier, the blue leaks were published on the DDoS server, which was seized by German authorities on behalf of America, right? The Germans were basically like, oh, you want to hide your dirty little secrets about persecution? We got you, bro. We totally <laughs> got you. We are very good at hiding dirty little secrets. Go ahead, ask us about 1936 to 1945, because... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We don't know what happened. Oh man, did something happen? We were all collectively taking a nap. Oh man. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of the show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. So uh, in America, there's various different types of law enforcement, right? You have the Department of Homeland Security, which is supposed to keep the homeland secure. Mm. Right, you have the Federal <laughs> Bureau of Investigation, which is an investigation agency that tracks serial killers and only serial killers, according to the television network CBS. <laughs> you also have the Central Intelligence Agency, which primarily runs coup d'etats, lies, <laughs> and also used to employ the world's most dangerous care bear, Mike Pompeo. <laughs> <laughs> which is very nice of them to do. But you also, have, you also have border patrol, right? Which are basically keepers of the line in the sand, right? <clears throat> I feel like everybody that worked at border, control, uh, border patrol were like kids they used to call traveling and out of bounds in games of pickup basketball, you know? <laughs> like they took backyard sports a little too seriously. And look, as an, <laughs> as an immigrant and a less than average sports ball player, uh, I've never liked those kids. Kind of hate them. <laughs> but that's just, that's just on the federal level. Then you have local law enforcement, right? You have city cops, county cops, state troopers, the sheriff's department, the Department of Neighborhood Patrol, those cops that give kids a ticket because their lemonade stand is a little too close to the curb. <laughs> Yes, those guys. And even lower than that, you have parking cops, right? Meter maids. 
then you also have campus security who roll in cop cars ensuring that drunk teens aren't fornicating in the library. <laughs> they do that by tasing everybody in the genitals. <laughs> That's the <your> preferred method. <laughs> and the lowest of low of all of the law enforcers is of course mall cops. <laughs> 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 America literally has more choices for law enforcement than birth control or education or health care combined. <laughs> the only thing that rivals the diversity of law enforcers in America is the diversity of reality TV shows. <laughs> but, you know, after the terrorist attacks of 9-11, all of these various departments decided to get together uh, and, and share their information to keep us secure, to prevent another terror attack. So across the country, agencies like the DHS, the FBI, and local law enforcement created these things called fusion centers. And unlike Asian fusion, uh, these places were an abomination and not friendly to the working class. <laughs> and unlike Asian fusion restaurants, these fusion centers had terrible lunch specials, you guys. <laughs> awful lunch. A lot of them involved immigrant detention centers, and that is that is not what you want for lunch. <laughs> but these fusion centers have actually been proven to be useless in terms of counterterrorism, and most of their efforts have been on. Uh, spying on citizens and attempting to infiltrate anti-war <laughs> activists and protesters. That's primarily what they've been doing. Now, this was one of the things that was revealed by the Blue Leaks over the summer. The Blue Leaks were uh, leaked by the hacktivist group Anonymous, and the leak was published to the site Distribution, Distributed Denial of Secrets, or DDoS, using a peer-to-peer -peer sharing technology like BitTorrent. That's right. The same technology that was once used by high school kids to get the new Three Days Grace album <laughs> is, is now being used to expose racist police. That's a big deal, you guys. We did it. That's called progress. <laughs> now, these, with this, this, of course, has the cops. <clears throat> they're singing, I hate everything about you to the hacktivists. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I can't sing any more of that song or else I, that, that'll, I'll get flagged for a copyright violation. <laughs> <laughs> One of the major privacy infringements came from Amazon's Ring, Right, the doorbell camera. According to the Blue, Link, Blue Leaks, Ring gathers information about your house, your address, and sends real-time activity to any law enforcement intelli uh, or any uh, intelligence agencies as well. And this is a clear violation of the Fourth Amendment. Collecting data and spying on the American people was revealed by Edward Snowden. He, he revealed that the NSA was spying on the American people. They were collecting data. And recently, a federal court, I believe it was the Ninth Circuit Federal Court, have agreed and declared that what the NSA did was unconstitutional. So how is using advancements in doorbell technology, which literally a phrase I never <laughs> thought I'd say. That's, that's where we've come to, everybody. <laughs> BitTorrent is, is leaking po racist police information uh, and we're advancing doorbell technology. <laughs> but how is this advancement in doorbell technology to collect data and spy on people any different than what the NSA did and not a violation of our Fourth Amendment rights? The simple answer is it's fucking not, <laughs> right? And, and, Law enforcement is using the terms protecting and serving us to cover their violation of constitutional rights.
But more importantly, this also shines a light on the fact that corporations are working with law enforcement and are using consumers unwillingly to do so, right? Now, here's the thing. The average suburbanite who uses this technology in their houses isn't aware that Ring is sharing data with law enforcement, right? There, there, there might even be a lot of them that are perfectly fine with it, right? There, there is an overwhelming amount of people in this country that are completely fine with giving away their civil liberties in the name of safety and protection from invisible mm -hmm. enemies. But there's uh, quite a bit of people who see this as an overreach by the thin blue hands of the law. But look, we're in a pandemic right now, right? And we all need to wear masks in public, which has now rendered facial recognition <laughs> software completely obsolete. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now this is a problem only if you're part of the Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> <laughs> the DHS basically came out look and said, "Hey guys, look, wash your hands, you know, wear a mask, but can we all think about our facial recognition software for like just a little bit though, please, you know, because because we can't use that if everybody's masked up and we really want to we we really <laughs> would like to just every once in a while can you just like remove that mask and smile at the camera just so just so we know just just so we can use our favorite toys <laughs> now According to the DHS, because masks render facial recognition useless, this gives criminals a larger opportunity to, you know, be criminals. And this isn't just coming out of fear, it's also coming out of absolutely no data to back up their claims. <laughs> the only claims that they do have is one white supremacist group that claim that they can do property damage and get away with it while wearing surgical masks. They were also going to call themselves the lab coat killers, but I decided <laughs> against it. Uh, well, because it kind of sounded like they were going to kill doctors, right? And, <laughs> and they can't do that because in their racist minds, only white people are doctors. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if you know this, guys, but killing white folks is very off-brand for white supremacists. <laughs> Not a part of their thing. I'm counting on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah the, now, the claim by the FBI is that these sort of technologies are only used to look for violence from opportunistic actors. And considering that no movies are being made right now, that makes total sense. <laughs> There are so many opportunistic actors out there, you guys. <laughs> but I don't think we should stop there. I think we should be looking out for opportunistic directors, producers, <laughs> key grips. <laughs> Look, the entertainment world is already a tough job market. And now that the FBI is onto, onto you, it, it, it's only going to make things a lot harder. <laughs> but facial recognition is a highly controversial matter. In 2019, the European Union actually banned facial recognition and biometric te technologies claiming that it violates human rights. Right? Facial recognition was sold on the idea of safety and security, but also to keep people a little scared. You know, you got to be scared primarily of being a suspect of like a crime you didn't commit. <laughs> Yeah, four out of five times, facial recognition software has led to false arrests, which means that people can get that warm, false sense of security. <coughs> but they can also get an irrational fear of cameras at all times, mm -hmm. which is fun. You know, cameras, they no longer just steal your souls. They also imprison you, like, forever. <laughs> Now, in 2019, Jason Tooley, a board member of Tech UK, said biometric and facial recognition technologies should be used in tandem with policing, not replace it. I mean, clearly, this guy hasn't been on a police stakeout. 
because that's doing both, okay? <clears throat> and despite all of this data about how ineffective facial recognition software really is, the DHS still wants to use it. And even though, even though they keep saying that masks are needed for our health and safety, they're going to take a cue from anti-mask protesters and cough on the Fourth Amendment. Mm -hmm. Now, these leaks also revealed that cops were being used by corporations as hired guns, right? Cops were being hired by corporations to protect things that were deemed as critical infrastructure, you know, yeah. things like pipelines and fracking equipment and <laughs> telecom towers, you know, not, mm -hmm. Not things that are actually pieces of critical infrastructure, you know, like roads and schools and hospitals and froyo shops. These are <laughs> real critical pieces of infrastructure. <laughs> now, what they're doing is they're, they're enforcing laws that uh, prevent protesters and activists from pushing back on leaking pipelines and fracking companies under boilerplate laws that were written uh, by right-wing Koch brother funded leg a legislative organization called ALEC, right? The American Legislation Executive Council. And not only is this a horrific piece of legislation, but it's also a new show on the Fox network. <laughs> <laughs> Watch a whole bunch of scamps try to save the environment only to find themselves on the wrong side of the law. This Thursday on Fox. <laughs> There are also mercenary cops hired by the tourism industry that partners with hotels in certain cities. And this can only mean one thing, a new spin-off show called CSI Quality Inn. <laughs> Quinta. <laughs> Most of the show is going to be collecting spunk off of hotel linens to solve the crime. <laughs> that porn, right? It's kind of like if Dexter meets CSI meets Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I'm excited, you guys. Very excited. <laughs> There's also a group that's hired for shoplifting incidences. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm real excited to see the first season of Law & Order Special Retails Unit. <laughs> It's gonna be a fun one. Not that one wasn't as big as this punk one. All right. <laughs> the leaks also identified courses that LA detectives can take offered by private surveillance corporation Palantir. Palantir is a company yeah. that has partnered with Amazon <laughs> and has been known to use facial recognition software to deport undocumented immigrants. So some of the course titles that these detectives were offered were uh, how to spot an immigrant, right? Italian or Indian, stereotyping shades of brown. It's a fun one. Uh, <laughs> recognizing faces, but not souls. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, everybody's favorite, how to love your Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, that class is, uh, that last class, very popular because it is 100% mandatory. So, <laughs> 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 Now, between using Amazon's Ring and Amazon partnered Palantir, Jeff Bezos is just kind of nuzzling under the bosom of Lady Justice, you know, whether she wants him to be there or not, because that's how bad boy Bezos do, baby. That's how he do, okay? He takes whatever he wants, and he wants fucking everything, all right? <laughs> except, except a head full of good hair. That is... <laughs> It doesn't, a villains can't have good hair, you guys. If you want to be a good villain, you got to be bald as shit. <laughs> now, as I mentioned earlier, the blue leaks were published on the DDoS server, which was seized by German authorities on behalf of America, right? The Germans were basically like, oh, you want to hide your dirty little secrets about persecution? We got you, bro. We totally got you. 
We are very good at hiding dirty little secrets. Go ahead, ask us about 1936 to 1945, because... <laughs> oh, my God. We don't know what happened. Oh, man, did something happen? We were all collectively taking a nap. Oh, man. <laughs> did something large happen? Perhaps dealing with six million Jews? I don't know. I couldn't tell. I don't know. That, that is the best German accent you guys are going to get out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the idea behind law enforcement is to protect and serve. And the Blue Leaks have re revealed that they're doing like a really shitty job of it. <laughs> These leaks show us that they're only protecting their own criminality and unconstitutional behavior. And the only thing they're serving are corporations and inanimate objects that are poisoning our planet. The, this only strengthens our need to defund the police and start funding more community-driven programs that are actually built on protecting and serving. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on wh when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. <laughs>